Yes. Adrift you. What's up guys, welcome back to another video and today we are doing a comprehensive lock kit guide for E36 BMWs. Uh, this probably does also apply to E46 BMWs as well, but do not quote me on that. So right now I'm about to install a brand new lock kit on my E36 BMW drift car. <laughs> this is a beautiful lock kit that I got from Kaz Engineering, which is a company here in Australia that develops BMW parts and as you can see it's absolutely beautiful but because I've had every budget lock kit under the sun that you could probably get for E36s I thought that I may as well talk you guys through the good the bad and just give you a bit of advice on what you should do if you're looking to purchase a budget lock kit for your BMW so obviously these are fancy lower control arms and these will set you back about $450 for the pair, which I think is absolutely amazing. Now, Kaz Engineering did uh, powder coat these custom purple uh, as a wee surprise for me because my BMW is purple and it goes very nicely with it. So shout out to Kaz Engineering for that. That's an awesome wee touch. And this is the version one of their lock adapters. And these, I think, are about $375, although they've been doing a lot of research and development. And version two of their lock adapters uh, is even stronger which is awesome, I'm still running version one. So what these do is we've got our BMW knuckle here. It looks, if you've never taken all this stuff apart before, it looks daunting, but it's actually very easy. Uh, but what these do is they bolt to your knuckle, just like this. So usually your tie rod end, which comes from the steering rack and turns your wheel by this pivot point here. So it turns it obviously like that. Usually would bolt into here in your knuckle. And what these adapters do is they reposition the, the point at which the tie rod end bolts to a new position that allows for a lot more lock. And these also have adjustment for bump steer as well. So it lowers the angle of the tie rod, therefore reducing the bump steer, which is pretty awesome, especially if you're running your car low like I do. So they bolt to here and then you get your new bolt point here. Super simple to bolt up. Now these are about $375 a set and definitely well worth it. They're made out of steel. So I'll walk you through what I started with when I first started drifting the E36 BMW. I had E46 lower control arms, which is what everyone seems to do. Off the top of my head, they're about 36 millimeters longer, which means they'll have your wheel sit out from the arches. About 36 millimeters more, gives you a bit more clearance on lock, right? And I was running these eBay uh, lock adapters. Very similar, obviously, to the Kaz lock adapters, although they have a different pickup point, slightly different Ackerman, and these are made of alloy. So they are weaker, as you can see. This one is bent. I just happened to bend it over time, and also this point at which the tie rod end goes into is not tapered. So over time, it'll kind of widen itself. You probably can't see it on camera, but there's a little ridge right here from where it's kind of widened itself from wiggling around in there um, to the point where it had a lot of play in the wheel. So whilst these are actually pretty good bang for buck at $25, $30 a set, right? And they'll get you through your first track days and give you a lot more lock, which is nice. Long term solution, I would, I would say you're going to end up upgrading these for sure. And saying that, they can be used very effectively. I'll show you guys quickly. I actually have a set of these installed here on this vert bmw that i've drifted in competition it just had a stock m52 b28 motor in it up next the borough car mike lake borrowing his mates convertible e36 big angle for mike lake tory onus in the k70 right behind him mike lake usually driving the sedan with the white body today borrowing his mate's car not a bad run there for tory onus Push it up hard! And here you can see we've got a set of these lock adapters uh, installed. And they so far are holding up really nicely. We've got some washers up top to help with kind of that situation that I said before with this pulling through. You can see the alloy is super weak. So those washers over up top really help. And this is a nice solution, right? But as I said, I was running the E46 arms and they are actually not the best solution if you want to run big boy wheels up front like I do. I like to run kind of 10 inch wide, nine and a half inch wide wheels up front. And, and because the E46 arm is wider than the E36 arm. Here's a quick picture of a comparison. 
your wheels on lock tend to rub on the E46 arms because they're a lot thicker, whereas the E36 arms are skinnier. So through here, obviously the E36 arm is a lot skinnier than the E46 arm, so it allows for more space for your wheel to fit in here when it's on lock. What I did instead of the E46 LCAs was I ended up extending a set of stock E36 LCAs and I've got a lot of friends that do this still to this day at the moment. Now these here have been extended 60 millimeters. You can extend them however long that you want. Obviously make sure you do the measurements properly. The more you extend them, the more camber you're gonna have on your wheels and they'll only be able to dial so much of that camber out in your top hat. So make sure that you're cautious about the amount that you extend them and don't go over the top. So I prefer extended E36 LCAs. Just a bit of steel welded in here and then obviously a reinforcement welded in over top. Make sure you get someone who knows what they're doing to weld them up. That is my recommendation for budget. LCAs in an E36 and then obviously when you're ready get something like these CAS engineering LCAs just absolutely amazing very well built CAS engineering $450 if you want to have mad hot boy LCAs then we've got these offset lollipop bushes so there are a couple of different types these are solid metal I didn't even know these existed until I found these in the vert that I got from Damon when I bought it so I'm using these ones instead but generally speaking you'll use your stop lollipop and you'll get the poly or Dalrin bush insert that just inserts and you have them set so that it maxes out the caster on the LCAs and this will get, give you a super nice lock setup so that's pretty much it in terms of lock setups and then obviously you can go the super expensive route like SLR, Wisefab, um, they're all pretty amazing but here in Australia they tend to set you back about two and a half thousand dollars for a lock kit something ridiculous like that I and mean, obviously if you have a crash you've got to replace it very expensive so the Budget lock kit has done me very well up until now, but now it's time to upgrade to these bad boys. It's pretty insane that you can get a set of these LCAs and these adapters, which will do you very well for about $700 for the kit. Super good value for money, but uh, let's go ahead and install this lock kit. I'm also chucking in some new coilovers. I was running the Max Beating Rods coilovers for the last couple of years, which done me really well. So that's these here. A lot of people give them uh, a lot of flack online, but to be honest, I never had any problems with them. Super good up front really nice and I obviously have the teen uh, re true coil over rear set up so yeah I never had a problem with them but I did get these Neomax uh, built in Australia fully adjustable coilovers for the front of my car for my friend and I decided it was too good of an offer to pass up definitely time to upgrade so uh, let's chuck this lock head in I'm freaking cannot wait to see how it looks first things first we'll chuck the LCA in so the LCA just slides up into the front subframe and does up with this uh, 22 mil bolt. Very simple. So we just slide it up, get the bolt on top. For the moment we're just going to do it up loosely, just like that. The LCA is sitting nicely in there. Next up we're going to put our lollipop bush on. Might have to tap this on because of the uh, powder coating. Alrighty, so we have our lollipop bush nicely in. Everything's looking super nice. So now it's time to chuck the knuckle onto the LCA. So we just lift it up on. Not easy to do with one hand. Nice wee flex there. Knuckles on. Awesome. So now it's time to grab our beautiful lock adapter. Slip that over just like this. All right. Boom. And then there's just a nut that goes through here and holds it on. That's, uh, that's supplied with the CAS knuckle. Just, boom, slips up through here, it's tapered nicely. We'll do that up nicely soon. Very, very simple. And then of course, so I've, obviously you'll t see that I've got the brake uh, cable tied up here to the side. That's because I've left it on before. This is all hanging down uh, with heaps of weight on it, right? And then it stretches the brake cable and you'll basically snap your brake cable and it's the worst time ever because then you have to find another one. Yeah, your brake line, sorry, not your brake cable, but you know what I mean. But uh, we'll go ahead and chuck the rest of this stuff together. Yee <laughs> Thank you. 
there we have it. The locket is installed. Looks freaking amazing. Everything is as it should be. Very, very easy to install. New coilovers are in. It's gonna be a new car to drive this thing, so freaking is stoked. Cannot wait to drive it this weekend. Very happy with those, with those LCAs. By the way, I forgot to mention those lock adapters. I sprayed them white. They don't come white, they come just bare steel. I just like the white on, yeah, the white on purple kind of look, but uh, yeah, wow. Looks freaking sick. All right, so it is another day, but I really wanted to show you guys the lock kit installed with some uh, natural light so that you guys could see it for yourselves. But uh, they come up super nice, looks really, really good. These arms are absolutely incredible, especially for the price, and you can get them at any length that you want, so pretty freaking amazing. Looks super good, everything is nice and tight. I'm just ridiculously stoked with it. So, uh, very, very happy. I cannot wait to test these things out. Got a big boy locket now, so now I just need to go ahead and obviously align the car and she'll be good to go. Thank you guys for watching this video. We will be testing this setup out this weekend at Pheasant Wood Circuit, two days of solid drifting. So, if you want to see how the setup goes, Check out my next video. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. I really hope this helps you guys out. Um, if I've missed any information, please add it in the comments below so that we can share information with each other because that's what it's all about, drifting, having a good time, and helping each other out. But uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next video. You Peace.